Hi guys and welcome. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, you can help us grow by hitting the subscribe button. And to all of my subscribers, thank you so much for always supporting our channel. With that being said, let's begin. I could still remember the camping trip like it was just yesterday. The natural air, the crackling of campfire, and the laughter of friends. It was a weekend of fun and adventure. It was a cold autumn evening when we set out for our camping trip. The leaves were the colors red and gold, and the scent of pine filled the air. My friends and I had only been planning this trip for about a couple months now. As we arrived at the camping site, we quickly set up our tents and gathered some wood to make a fire. The sun was beginning to set, casting long shadows across the forest floor. We sat around the campfire, roasting mung sausages and spilling some good tea. The warmth of the flames kept the chill at bay. Everything was going as planned, but when it got darker, we all decided maybe it's time to hit the hay. It wasn't until later that night, as we all laid in our tents trying to sleep, that was when we heard it, a faint whisper like the rustling in the wind. At first, we just brushed it off as it was just the sound of the force settling in the night. But as the whispers grew louder and more intense, we realized that something was wrong. Then we all heard like someone is throwing sticks at our tents. Sticks after sticks after sticks. Who at this time would have the energy to do this to us? I cautiously unzipped my tent and peered out to see into the darkness, my heart pounding in my chest. As I searched around our area with my eyes, I can see a white figure sitting on top of our picnic table, just swaying its translucent body from side to side. As I slowly zip up the zipper to our tent, two pale feet walk past right where I was zipping. I stopped breathing. Scared and shaken, I just crawled back slowly without finishing zipping up the tent. I stumbled back into the tent, waking up my friends with a sense of urgency. They too had seen the figure, and fear gripped us. We huddled together in the darkness, praying for morning to come and banish the shadow that was lurking beyond our campsite. But morning brought no relief, only more questions and uncertainty. My buddy too, he seems differently somehow, his eyes full of dark circles as if he hasn't slept in weeks. He spoke little, lost in his own thoughts. I couldn't shake the feeling that something had changed him. We all knew we had to end the trip short and take two back to his house before everything gets worse. As the days turned into weeks after our camping trip, Tu's behavior became increasingly erratic. He would mutter to himself incoherently. His eyes move around the room if he was seeing something that wasn't even there. I tried to reach out to him to offer comfort and support, but he keeps pushing me away, lost in the grip of whatever dark force had taken a hold of him. As much as I cared for Tu, there was nothing I can do to help him. Seeing him reacting so differently really makes me sad that this isn't the two that I once knew. Years passed and still two struggles to find peace, still not being able to find himself. His mental statement is getting worse by the day. He would scream at the wall and laugh to himself. It was like he was a whole different person. His family grew increasingly concerned for his well-being convinced that he was suffering from schizophrenia, but I knew the truth, that he may have been possessed by the ghost that we had encountered when we went camping. I tried to warn them to make them see reason, but they dismissed my claims and said that maybe it's best for him to go see a psychiatrist. Even after many sessions with the psychiatrist, nothing seems to be helping him, and so too suffered alone, tormented by something that only he can see and sense. And then, one day, he was just gone, 
just like that, my good friend, my brother from another mother, found unalive in the closet of his childhood home, a sad and tragic end to his life, consumed by darkness. His family mourned his passing, but couldn't help but feel a sense of relief that he is not suffering anymore. But even now, as I sit by the campfire on another cold autumn evening, I can't shake the feeling that my best friend, taken too soon by something that our world cannot explain, and I pray that wherever two is, he has found peace. I never believed in ghosts or spirits. This is until I slept over at my cousin's house, a night that I'll never forget. My cousin Lee, his mom had always been fascinated by our Hmong heritage. Her room was full of traditional Hmong vintage stuff, including a collection of dolls dressed in Hmong clothes. These dolls, you cannot buy them at the store. You can only buy them at Hmong stores. These dolls are dressed in Hmong clothes, but the dolls are actually American dolls. They are beautiful in their own ways with their embroidery clothes and delicate features, but there was something about them that always gives me an uneasy feeling. Their glassy eyes seem to be following me wherever I go. As night fell and we were settling down to sleep, I kept getting the feeling of being watched. I tossed and turned in my sleeping bag. The darkness pressed in all around me and then I heard a soft rustling coming from the hallway. My heart started to pound as I strained to see through the darkness. I crawled out of Lee's bed and looked in the hallway towards his mom's room. And that's when I saw a Hmong doll standing in the middle of the hallway. Her eyes seems to be glowing in the darkness. As I tried to look closer, the doll smiled and I swear I heard giggling coming from the doll. That's when I started to scream. I screamed so loud, it woke up everyone in the house. Right when Lee's mom turned on the lights, the Hmong doll suddenly jolted. She vanished into thin air. And that's when Lee dragged me back to sleep without asking me what happened. I was too afraid to even tell him yet because I was still under the same roof as the Hmong doll. I tried to convince myself it was just a trick of the light, a figment of my overreacting imagination. But deep down, I know that what I witnessed was real. And as sleep finally claimed me, I pray that I would wake up to find that it was just a nightmare. But the nightmare was far from over. On another night, as I drifted to sleep, the Hmong doll came to me in a dream. She stood before me, her eyes burning with fury of intense, as she spoke in a voice that chilled my bones. I want to marry you, she said, her words echoing in the darkness of my subconscious. I recoil in horror, trying to get my conscious back. No, I cannot marry you, my voice barely a whisper. But the doll only laughed. You have no choice, she hissed. If you refuse, I will make your girlfriend disappear. I awoke with a start, drenched in a cold sweat as the echoes of my dream lingered in my mind. I knew I had to warn my girlfriend, to tell her about the sinister presence that threatened to tear us apart. But when I tried to explain it to her, she laughed it off thinking that my fear is just taking the toll over me. She told me to stop being a child and to stop thinking that this superstitious thing is real. Months have gone by and the memories of the dream that I had about the doll started to fade away in my mind. But then, one fateful day, tragedy struck my girlfriend. My girlfriend was involved in a car accident her life snuffed out of her instantly. And as I stood by her grave, consumed by grief and guilt, I knew that the Hmong doll had made good on her promise. I was terrified, 
haunted by the knowledge that the doll's sinister influence still lingered, waiting to strike again, begging them to help me to get rid of the spirit that has cursed my life. My parents did onintoku, but I could still see and feel the doll in my dreams. So my parents decided if we really want to get this doll away from me and maybe even save my life, we will have to find a very powerful tsining to come and get rid of this evil being. Weeks later, my uncle found a tsining that is in another state. He said he's able to help me, but it will cost about two grands alone. My parents didn't care about the price as long as he can save me. My parents flew him out and he did his ritual. Months later, I started to gain weight again and I was able to sleep through the night without having any more nightmares. I never imagined that my job as a Hmong home care nurse would lead me down such a terrifying path. When I first started this job, I was taking care of these two elderly Hmong couples, Mr. and Mrs. Vang. As time went on, they became more like family to me, filling the void left by the absence of my own grandparents. I asked them if they would allow me to call them Nitai Teyotsi, and they approved. The Vangs live in a little house on the outskirt of town, surrounded by towering trees. Their home was a sanctuary of warmth and love, filled with the aroma of traditional Hmong dishes and the greenery of all their house plants. I grew to love my time spent with them, listening to their stories of life in Laos and the struggles they face as immigrants in a foreign land. They welcomed me into their home with open arms, treating me not as a nurse, but as a cherished member of the family. But then, one fateful day, everything changed. It has been three days since I came to take care of them. I arrived at the Vang's home as usual, ready to begin my shift, only to find Mrs. Vang sitting alone in the living room, her eyes filled with confusion and sorrow. Tai, yo tine? I asked gently, sensing the tension in the air. She looked at me with no expression on her face, her memories failing her as it often did in her old age. She said. But as the hours passed and Mr. Vang failed to return, a sense of unease settled over me. So I decided to go check on him myself, fearing the worst. I found him laying in bed cold and motionless, his body already stiffed. Horror washed over me as I realized that he has been dead for hours now, and Mrs. Bang has been sitting in the living room, oblivious to his passing. I called 911 in a panic, tears streaming down my face as I struggled to come to terms of the loss of Mr. Bang. The paramedics arrived too late to save him and I was left alone in a silent house, still trying to comfort Mrs. Vang, but her mind isn't sitting right to understand that her husband is long gone. So I decided to call her two children to come out and see her, and watch over her as I sadly end my shift. Weeks passed and I returned to take care of Mrs. Vang, my heart heavy with grief and guilt. She seems to sense my distress, Offering me a sad smile as I tend to her needs. Tai, go yo tin to unya the notia? She whispered to me with a little giggle of happiness. I froze, my blood running cold as her words got to me. Nitai, go halikyano? I asked, my voice trembling with fear. Yo tin jo na no na, go po po. She said, pointing to an empty chair by the window. I felt chills as I glanced at the empty chair, half expecting to see Mr. Vang's ghostly figure staring back at me. But there was nothing there, only the shadows of the window curtains. I tried not to think too much about what Mrs. Vang had said, 
plus, she is a grieving widow at the moment. But deep down, I knew something is wrong. The house felt different now. The warm house that it used to be isn't the same. Once you walk in there, you can feel the coldness running through you. And then, one night, as I lay in bed, a soft whisper coming from the window. My heart pounding in my chest as I strained to listen to the eerie sound. I lay there in the dark, praying for morning to come and banish the nightmare that is haunting me. But the nightmare only grew worse. I saw a shadow moving across my window. The manly figure made me think about Mr. Vang. Then on one rainy day, I got the news that Mrs. Vang was gone. I went to her house. But there, I stood alone in an empty house, surrounded by the echoes of the past and the memories that I had with Mr. and Mrs. Vang. I started to cry. The passing of Mr. and Mrs. Vang just makes my heart ache, as if they too were my grandparents. During her funeral, her kids were kind enough to invite me to see her for one last time. Looking into her casket, my tears fell. The sadness and sorrow that she must have been feeling when she lost her husband. But now they must be happy, happy together once again, like they did when I was taking care of them. You could just see on her face a little grin, a smile. As sad as I was to see her go, I knew she was in a better place, a better place with the one she loved.